Um, first thing we need to do is approve the minutes, and then I'll just summarize the agenda. But let's do that first. I have a motion. Mo move to approve the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Minutes are approved. Um, we have uh, some correspondence that I will just identify for the record. Memorandum from the town manager regarding U.S. Cellular. Memorandum from the town manager regarding Old Sea Point Road. Copy of the court decision in Blueberry Ridge. Zoning news, August 2003. Zoning news, September 2003. And letter from Frick Associates, re Old Sea Point Road. Uh, the agenda, on the agenda this evening, we have two items on the consent agenda. The first, uh, Cape Elizabeth Family Medicine Site Plan Extension. The second is the Pond Cove Shopping Center Site Plan Amendment. Under new business, Playstead Park Concession Stand Site Plan, United States Cellular Corporation Utility Building, Old Sea Point Road KLS Subdivision Amendment, and Cisco School Change of Use. So the first item is the Cape Elizabeth Family Medicine Site Plan, which is a request for an extension of the site plan approval granted for additions. Um, as the board knows, since this is on the consent agenda, uh, if the board member wishes to have a sub substantive discussion on this, we would need a motion to move it to the regular agenda. Uh, would anyone like to see this on the regular agenda? Okay. Uh, therefore, this is a consent agenda item. Uh, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider the ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts presented, the application of Dr. Craig Johnson to extend to September 17, 2004, the site plan approval granted for an addition to the building located at 1226 Shore Road be approved as a consent agenda item. We have a second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion? It's unanimous. Thank you. Second consent agenda item is a request by Lathrop and Lathrop to amend the previously approved site plan for Ponco Shopping Center to remove existing wood shingles and replace them with architectural shingles. Uh, again, uh, please let me know if any member of the board wishes this on the regular agenda. Okay. Uh, therefore, it's appropriate for a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Lathrop and Lathrop to replace the existing wood shingles on the Pond Cove Shopping Center located on Ocean House Road with architectural shingles be approved as a consent agenda item. Chairman, I'd like to second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, the first item under new business is the request by the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of a new concession stand at Playstead Park. And for the applicant, Good evening, Mr. Harding. Thank you. 
I'm Steve Harding. I'm a town engineer. I also work for Oast Associates. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of the uh, town of Cape Elizabeth and the Little League Boosters. We're proposing to build a 16 by 8, uh, excuse me, a 16 by 48 foot building in the area where there's an existing bleacher out in uh, out of Playstead Park. Just to orient you with the site plan, these two drawings are in your packet tonight. We have Shore Road to the bottom of the sheet, Little John Road running up this way. The existing ball field here in the project area would be right in this area. Uh, the second sheet of the elevation views of the proposed building. Um, basically what we're proposing to do is build the building in uh, it's basically three uh, areas within one space. Uh, to the on, on the floor plan here, there's a storage area to the extreme right of the building. They'll have uh, doors in the from the uh, parking lot side, and then an overhead door leading to the field. Uh, we're running a continuous fence along here. That's the existing fence with the uh, ball field, and all we propose to do is put a gate in that area so that uh, lawnmowers and equipment can access the field through this area. The center area of the building would be a kind of an open patio area. We're showing a gate on the front side of the building and a, and a wrought iron gate on the back side of the building to protect people that are in this area from uh, uh, errant balls. The uh, third part of the building will be, a, half of it will be a concession booth area and uh, that will be area where people can get uh, pre mostly pre-packaged food, uh, chips, candy bars, it is. I guess they also do steamed hot dogs and then on if a uh, day is really nice they might set up a barbecue outside and sell hamburgers as well. Uh, the third area over here is uh, for a future bathroom. We're going to have a knockout panel in the slab for the future plumbing, but we're not putting anything in, no new sewer, no new water. Uh, that third area, if you recall from our workshop, uh, the bathroom area, we were proposing to put uh, porta potties in there. Uh, we've gone away from that idea, and we're going to put them back where they, they traditionally have been in the past. So we're taking that, that away. There was also a question that came up about hand washing. We're we'll providing uh, sanitary wipes or some of that sanitary lotion or if need be, bring some warm water to the field and, so that the people that are preparing the hot dogs have an opportunity to wash their hands and, uh, so that's not a sanitary issue. Uh, as far as utilities, like, like I said, there's no new water, no new sewer. We are proposing to bring an underground electric line off the uh, power from uh, Little John Road here. We're also proposing to put an under drain around the building with two area, excuse me, three area drains along here. This will discharge over into this uh, drainage area off to the uh, right here, or the north. Uh, basically, this area is some isolated ponding that goes on today. And we think with that, the, that addition of the under drain and the area drains, that that should help alleviate that pond, that problem. Uh, we are also, as a comment from the uh, from the workshop, uh, there's an eight-foot no parking zone designated around the building. That will be uh, uh, signed off during events by the Little League volunteers when they open the concession booth. So they're going to come up with something, either the placard signs or some kind of a, a way to distinguish that area so people don't park in that area. Uh, we are asking for uh, three waivers, one on the lot line dimensions. Uh, this is a lot that was given to the town several years ago. It's been on the tax assessor's records for some time. Uh, so we've shown the approximate setbacks, which the building is clearly within all the required setbacks. Not uh, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we're also asking for a waiver of the high intensity soils information. Uh, this area has been uh, heavily developed in the past so that the uh, native soils have been reworked and uh, we feel quite confident that a one-story building will be able to be placed on the soils that are there today. Uh, we're also asking for a waiver of the formal stormwater calculations. Uh, this is a relatively small building and we feel that uh, with a small amount of drainage improvements that will actually improve that area and not require formal drainage calculations. With that, I'd open it up for any questions you might have. Okay, um, let me just remind the board the first issue we have to determine is completeness. So uh, if anyone has any questions on that issue, if not, maybe we can consider a motion on that issue alone. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of a new concession stand and bleachers to be built at Placid Park be deemed complete. And a second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? 
Okay. Um, any questions for the applicant on the application? Just, I, I did note in, in your uh, letter dated September 29th that there was a reference to uh, the boosters hoping to complete construction in late October through November, which led me to believe that perhaps you were hoping to have the application approved tonight as opposed to the next public That's hearing. something I probably should have added in my presentation. You would greatly like to get started on this building um, as soon as possible. I think everybody here is probably familiar with the site, the site itself, so I hope you don't need a sidewalk. Leave it up to the board whether or not you need a public hearing, but we're hoping that the, the project is relatively straightforward, uh, that it wouldn't need to, to have a public hearing and that they could get approved tonight. I, I just can't recall, Maureen, from our workshop whether we talked about noticing this up for a hearing tonight. Uh, we didn't talk about holding a, to notice it for a public hearing tonight. We thought it might be a um, project that people would be very interested in that we'd want to schedule a public hearing, but I haven't received one phone call. Any other questions? Um, in, in light of the, I mean, and I appreciate the, the scheduling issues, I know that normally when the town's involved, we like to have public hearing, but I, for one, don't think for this project that it's an absolute necessity. I don't know how other people feel. I mean, I certainly can be persuaded, and I wouldn't oppose having a public hearing, but I'm curious as to how the rest of the board feels about uh, scheduling this. It would be November 18th. Uh, for, a, for a public hearing. I don't think I'd oppose a public hearing um, or suggest a public hearing um, if they want to get in the ground soon. <laughs> that's going to stall it off another month. I don't think, I don't see, I, I didn't hear your comment, Maureen, but you said you had not received any phone calls. Not one, not one call. One way or the other. Right. And we didn't, we, we didn't mail a notice that said there will be a public hearing tonight, but we do mail a notice that says the planning board will begin to review a project um, for a concession stand at Placed Park, and we haven't received any phone calls on it. And those are the same abutters that would get the notice of a public, public hearing. hearing? Exactly. So do we have the authority to approve this now? Sure. We do. We don't have to schedule. No. Public hearings are within our site plans. Yeah. Okay. That's within right. our discretion. Barbara. Well, I, I, for one, would like to compliment you for speaking to every single point that we raised at the workshop, and you did it very well. I'm, I'm extremely pleased. I see no reason for a public hearing in this particular case, since everybody should know about it who abuts the property. It's been a ball field for a long time, and this is something I think the town would enjoy rather than have, that's a personal opinion, but have questions about uh, I, would, I, I agree with Barbara. Yeah, okay. I, I don't see that at this point, given the evidence we have and the uh, completeness of the plan, I don't see any point in having an additional public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions of Steve about the project? Yeah. I, I have one question. That, um, I did comment at, at the workshop about it, but I. I just looking at the plan, Steve, and the, and the layout relative to the building and the bleachers. Um, people that would be sitting in that bleachers would not be able to see um, the complete field, especially left field, where most of those kids are right-handed, and the balls end up in left field. Um, so the bleachers wouldn't really get fully used. And I just played around with some dimensions and. If, if that building was moved eight feet away from the fence, two things would happen. One, the bleachers, as you've got them drawn in there, would uh, be, to the, all seats would be visible to the entire field. Um, second of all, you would have more space in front of the building uh, for access in that area. And uh, um, I, I just, I just thought I'd raise that question to you just to make it a little more palatable or do something about the bleachers. 
Are you suggesting we're eight feet further back than it is? Yes. And I don't know whether it's going to create it, but I don't want to hold your project up for something like that. But I would think that. Um, um, I actually, we we did listen to your comment okay. uh, from the from the uh, workshop. And if you remember, we had the bleachers more in the center here. We actually pushed them closer to the to the uh, proposed building location because we felt that people would want to see home plate in the infield area. And from this from this location, yes, if you were sitting in this area, you would be blocked from you know this this corner of the field if you're in the back corner. If you're up near the front, I think you can still see quite a bit of left field. If we slide them close to the dugouts, then we have the opposite problem. We start to lose part of the home plate in the infield. Again, the same thing happens here. We could we toyed around with bringing them over here, but again, the dugouts start blocking off a large portion of the field. Um, I have Jeff Gump here today from the Little League Volunteers. I'm sure if you'd like to comment on setting that building back. Um, I wouldn't have any problem. As a parent, being at the ball field for many hours watching games, <laughs> uh, parents seem to gravitate to this area because it's close to the parking area. And I would visualize if you had eight or ten feet in front of the building to the fence, it wouldn't be a bad place to watch the game as well as on the bleachers. So. But w would that take up parking or driveway space? If it was moved, it, it's going to start eating into it the further back, and that's one of the reasons I think we, we first we started near the fence and said that's going to take up too much space, and we wanted to have the ability to go in in between the fence and the building here. Uh, if we start to creep back into here, we get a little bit into the parking, but um, I think people here, you know, the the, the existing bleachers are rel relatively tall, so they tend to go into this area, whereas these these bleachers are the, the portable aluminum style bleaches that you know are going to be maybe six to seven feet tall as opposed to what they have today. Um, they're a little bit more efficient because I think you get a better seating ratio than you might get with the existing ones but uh, there's a, a lot of amp uh, a lot of opportunities here for people to stand around on the back side of the fence or in through here. Um, I guess the Little League boosters are telling you they don't have a strong opposition to moving it back though if that's the, the board's preference. Dave, are you suggesting moving the building back yes, into the lot? away from the fence. I don't want to hold the project up, but if we gave them some flexibility to do that and they found out that they could do it easily, it would just make it, I That's think. That's an important issue, and we want, yeah. we want people to be able to see from everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, Dave, what, if, if you were to grant kind of an envelope within which they could do it, how many feet flexibility would it be? Four feet six, back? Or? Six or eight feet from the present position, or six feet would be adequate. It would give them, it would give them about ten feet between the fence. And I think that would... I, I can't help thinking that eight feet is going to really push it into the, the drive where cars go back and forth. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I'm trying to visualize it. Right. <laughs> You know, but my concern is more to do with the building coming back into the the brown shaded area, which is where 
cars are pulling. There's still approximately yeah. 50 feet or so in here, 50 or 60 feet from yeah. no parking zone to the uh, yeah. existing edge of the gravel. And now they've moved those bleachers forward towards the fence a little bit more, too. There's only three yeah. feet between the front of the bleachers and the fence. So well, uh, unfortunately, Jeff, if you, you're going to have to come to the microphone to address oh. because of the uh, recording system and all that. The bleachers could also move forward to get the maximum view. We've shown them pretty close to the building here, but they could slide down. I mean, I can play with that. We want everybody to be able to see it, and, and I do appreciate that concern. I just but moving the building back to the six-foot mark, no problem. I don't think that's going to impact the parking or the driving. I'd be concerned if you said go back 12 feet. I think. But uh, six or eight feet at a maximum, I don't think would, yeah. would be too taking too much more. And the plan is showing four right now, right? Right now, it does. Okay. And you're saying six is okay, 12 is too much, eight? Yeah. I think between, if, if we do both, if we move the building to six and I play with the bleachers left and right and in and out a little, that we'll, we'll get a, a good compromise where maybe not every single seat on that top row will see every part of the field but we've got them over here we could even put another set the bleachers I'm not so concerned about because they can move but once you set that building yeah. uh, I'm trying to find a spot that that keeps people out of harm's way in the parking lot yet gets people seeing the game which is kind of the point of the exercise mm. um, I certainly think six or eight feet is workable uh, I do think that people come into that lot pretty is a matter of turnaround, just come up to that spot and back into some of the other spots on the other side. Uh, just from my experience there. Okay. I'd just be more concerned about the parking issue and the placement of the building as opposed to the ability of spectators and the bleachers. I, I think you'll be able to move that set of bleachers around to maximize the vision of the left field, having sat through uh, innumerable Little League games. Not that many balls get pulled into the left field, <laughs> deep left field corner anyway. Um, and you're right, they're rarely full. So I, I, I would be inclined to leave the building where it is, and maybe you can fool around with the uh, location of those bleachers. Mr. Chairman? Yes. In the interest of moving the application along this evening and hopefully <clears throat> considering it for final approval, I would suggest leaving the building exactly where it is and using your imagination with the movable bleachers uh, because uh, it re requires rewriting the motion and... Uh, also, the cost of redoing the plans and bringing it back to the planning board for final signatures. And I would say I suggest leaving the building where it is and finding a slightly better place for the bleachers. Thank you. Okay. Um, any more discussion or questions for the applicant? We have a motion. Okay. for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review of a new concession stand and bleachers to be built at Plaisted Park be approved second moved and seconded all in favor it's unanimous thank you thank you very much thank you
Good evening. Members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. My name is Ed Shaw, and I work for a company called LCC International. We've been hired by United States Cellular to deploy a network in Cumberland County, and part of that process is looking for a place to uh, provide cellular service in Cape Elizabeth. We've identified a location on Strout Lane, and we'd like to place a utility building at the base of that tower. If I could take a moment to get you orientated with the project. This is the key here. It's, it's located off the Spurwink Avenue. Strout Lane is a private road that goes in to the location. This shows the lot here. The driveway goes in and goes to the Strout home. And then there are two towers in there. There's one here and one here. We're proposing to place the utility building at the base of this one. This is a blown up version of that. This shows where the buildings are around that tower. And this shows where the existing building is and then the proposed uh, building for United States Cellular as well. Okay. Um, the uh, let just point out to the board that there was a minor issue here to determine if uh, we have sufficient information. There has not been an engineering review because of a uh, conflict. And I'm wondering whether anyone on the board believes that we should have any sort of engineering input or review for this project. Barbara. I did drive by the site. I don't know if anybody else had the opportunity to do so, but I did. And it is very secluded. The towers are already there. And I imagined what this change would be. And it's really very minor. So I, I think that Maureen felt fairly comfortable. Is that not correct, Maureen? With not having it reviewed by an outside engineer makes me feel comfortable not having it reviewed also and looking at the site and seeing there's nothing that anybody could see from anywhere unless they got right on the site and looked. Okay. Dave? Uh, I will concur with that. Uh, on top of that, I would say that we've had at least four presentations in my tenure on the board, and I think there's been enough engineering and enough uh, work done so that another building in this site isn't going to uh, cause any great problem and I don't see any need to hire an engineer to tell us that. Um, I know at the workshop, did we talk about erosion control measures uh, in connection with this? I, I, don't, I don't recall that we did. However, um, certainly a concern of ours and every measure that needs to be taken would be taken. Okay. Maureen, there's a reference in the draft motion that, uh, that the erosion control measures would be uh, consistent with best management practices. What, what is that a reference to? Uh, the reason I put that in is I was trying to think of what an engineer, if we had had an engineering review, what would have been raised. And the only thing that I could see that, you know, other than knocking down the tower when you're putting in the building, and I'm sure you won't do that, um, would be if, as you're regrading to install the tower, you could be exposing some soils. And um, best management practices is the term that the code enforcement officer uses. So by adding this note, basically gives the code enforcement officer authority when he goes out there to do an inspection to make sure that we don't have an erosion situation. And if we do, he's going to tell them, put in hay bales, put in silt fencing, whatever you need. And would that be acceptable to the Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I know we've we've been over this application in detail in the workshop. I guess the next question is whether uh, that we want a site walk or a public hearing. I, I don't really see the need for it, but if anyone else does, no. Okay. Um, any other questions for the applicant? Any further discussion on this? I know we've talked about it in workshop for a while. I don't want it to seem as if we 
have not considered this, but we have in detail. So, any other questions? No? Ready for a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carr. Hearing no further questions, I have a motion for the Board to consider. Findings of fact, number one, the United States Cellular Company is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Strout Tower site plan to install a 12 by 20 foot utility building at the base of the tower, which requires site plan review under sections 19-9-6 site plan amendments. Number two, construction of the utility building will include removing vegetation and disturbing soil. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the United States Cellular Company to install a utility building at the base of the Strout Tower located on Strout Road be approved with the following conditions. Number one, that erosion control measures consistent with best management practices be installed. So moved. We have a second. Seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is John Mitchell and I represent uh, KLS LLC for the uh, application to amend a previously approved subdivision, uh, the old Sea Point Road subdivision on Old Ocean House Road. Uh, pretty straightforward. We are uh, taking one of the lots, one of the three lots, um, in the original subdivision and dividing it in half to create two 80,000 square foot lots uh, with frontage on Old Sea Point Road and Old Ocean House Road. Um, we have uh, responded to uh, both Maureen and um, Steve Harding's comments, which I'd like to review with you. Yes, please do. Uh, uh, Maureen, Maureen's comments, basically, uh, some of them were the same as, as Steve's. Uh, adding a signature block, which we've done to the amended subdivision plan. Uh, Paragraph number, uh, paragraph, uh, item number one of Steve's letter, uh, he is requesting that we uh, show the placement of iron pins on the new property line, which we have. Uh, we've added uh, one, two, three, four iron pins uh, to be set at the new property line. Uh, and we've also, we've added the signature block. Uh, number two, uh, we've added a note number nine on the amended subdivision plan, uh, which references the, um, the latest amended subdivision plan, uh, along with the book and page number. Item number three, we have added note number eight on the amended subdivision plan, which essentially uh, indicates that 
upon the issuance of a building permit to any lot uh, uh, fronting Old Sea Point Road would be responsible, would be required to upgrade uh, Old, Old Sea Point Road uh, to in accordance with the subdivision ordinance. Uh, item number four, uh, Steve asked for us to indicate the water services to the two lots which we have. Uh, we have located the existing water line in Old Ocean House Road. It's actually not on the road, but uh, closer to the lot line. And we've shown two one and a half inch services, one to the first lot and the other to the second lot. And item number five uh, refers to the road maintenance agreement. And according to Maureen, my discussions with Maureen, uh, she did find the previous road maintenance agreement, which is still in effect uh, for this subdivision and does not need to be amended. And number six has to do with waivers. And as we as we requested in our application is, and as we talked about in our workshop, that we're requesting um, three waivers, basically. The two-foot contours, stormwater management plan, and a completed HHE 200 form uh, for lot one. And basically, Steve supports these waivers. Um, he is deferring to the code enforcement officer for the HHE 200 form, which, um, I believe uh, Bruce has recommended that we don't need one uh, until a building permit is taken taken out for that lot. So uh, those are, I think I've, I've covered all of the comments. Um, and uh, we would request that uh, if the planning board deems this to be complete, and they don't find the need to, for a uh, public hearing that we would request conditional approval this evening. Um, conditional approval addressing, making sure that we've addressed all Steve Harding's comments and Marines. Questions? We, we don't have to make a formal finding of completeness on this, but Obviously, if there's additional information that anyone would like to see, certainly free to raise that issue. Okay. I just have a question for Maureen. Did this, was this uh, application uh, noticed for a public hearing tonight? Have you received any inquiries or re responses to the notices that have gone out already? I received a call in response to the workshop notice, and I haven't received any other calls. I have a question, I guess, of Maureen, that um, given the fact, as I understand this, the, whenever a building permit is requested, the road will then have to be widened from 12 to 18 feet. Is that how right. this is, the condition is going to work? The, the original maintenance, the maintenance agreement that was approved for the last amendment talks about bringing the road up to standard when a building permit is pulled for the new lot. At that time there was one new lot that was added. Um, I had asked Mr. Mitchell, because the question was raised, and if it's raised and there's nothing on the plan, and someone has to go find the maintenance agreement, it becomes, it, it becomes a little bit murky. So I'd asked him to actually add a specific note to this plan that says that when a building permit is pulled for any lot on Old Sea Point Road, because there is the potential that additional lots could be created on this road. That at that point, the road would have to be brought up to, it would not brought up to standard, but brought in cons to constructed to be consistent with this proposed plan. Does that answer your question? Uh, somewhat. So, so the condition would would be what that it. That it, form to that a note be added to the plan. I, I mean, I've spoken with Mr. Mitchell, and there are several 
what we thought were relatively minor kind of cleanup things that he added to the plans and so he's added them to this plan that you have not seen and i have suggested that if the board was of a mind that you could approve the plan that you do have right in front of you that you've already received with conditions and then mr mitchell is going to bring this plan into me tomorrow morning and i'm going to check and make sure that all the things on that plan ha have the conditions that you've asked for mm -hmm. so that that is one way to go and, and the thing that i had asked for is that there be a note that basically restates what's already in the maintenance agreement that if a building permit for a new dwelling is pulled that has and the lot has frontage in old sea point road at that point old sea point road has to be brought into compliance with this plan but i guess my my next question is does the widening of the road create any issues that we should be thinking about now because obviously once right. it's done mm -hmm. the, then the widening of the road was when but those there are two lots on the south side of old sea point road um, this came into the board in 2001 and you approved the division of the, of that one lot into two lots and at that time we found all these problems with the road being in the wrong place and a new right-of-way was created so that the road would be in the middle of a new right-of-way and you required that the road be upgraded to 18 feet wide and i believe that you looked at all of those potential impacts at that time that you approve that so this plan tonight isn't proposing any changes to the road that weren't already approved in 2001 because in 2001 an 18 foot road was approved actually in 1991 or 2000 whatever but in 2001 you re you reapproved the plan with changes to the road and the, an 18 foot wide road was approved as part mm -hmm. of that plan okay Well, I guess the next issue is what is the board's wish in terms of either a site walk and or a public hearing? I don't uh, see any need for a site walk. Um, I've been close to the property a couple of times and <clears throat> I wouldn't see any benefit to me to walk the site. As far as a public hearing is concerned, uh, I don't uh, you know, we haven't heard any really questions regarding it from the neighbors, so I would, I wouldn't be in favor of having a site walk. Barbara, I, I agree with Dave, but I have a question, and that is, it, it doesn't show it. I don't believe on the plans either. Um, does don't there have to be 10 feet of paving, according to the new regulations now on that road, as it intersects with old Ocean House Road? I believe the entire road is proposed to be paved. Oh, okay. okay fine. That answers that. Dave? Uh, given the nature of this application and given that it would be subject to all of the conditions raised in the town engineer's uh, letter, I would be inclined to move forward without a public hearing tonight and approve the application. <coughs> Yeah. Chairman, I agree with my peers on the board. All right. Does anyone have any other questions for Mr. Mitchell or any other issues on the application? Would someone like to take a shot at making a motion? I have a question of the town planner first. Are there any conditions that should be included in this motion at your suggestion? Yes, there are. Um, the first condition would be that the plans be revised to reflect the town engineer's letter of October 14, 2003. And the second condition that I would recommend, and I think it's going to require John slightly revising what you already wrote, would be that um, a note be added to the plan stating that um, when a building permit for a new dwelling is requested for any lot that has frontage on Old Sea Point Road, the road shall be uh, upgraded to be consistent with this approved subdivision plan. Seem to know that I 
you you mentioned subdivision ordinance and i don't think you want to the road to be upgraded to the subdivision on it so i think you want to be upgraded to this plan because when the road was approved in two thousand and one there were some waivers granted from the subdivision ordinance requirements no no i said the subdivision plan ok good would you like me to read it yeah what my don't you just said uh, the issuance of a building permit for a new home on any lot that has frontage on old sea point road shall be responsible for the road improvements of Old Sea Point Road in accordance with the approved subdivision plan. Did it, did it say any building permit or building permit for new dwelling? It said new home. Okay. For new home. Okay, so conditions reflected in the town engineer's letter and the note on the plan regarding the road. Anything else? Okay. I'll be happy to make a motion if Maureen would uh, state once again the second condition. Can we just get it from the minutes, you think? Sure. <laughs> Second condition. Okay. Well, no. My suggestion would be that what I said before is what we'll use. Okay. By reference. Oh, we'll just reference your. Yeah, okay. and we'll just we'll, okay. we'll 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 just put it into your your motion. All right. Is that all right? Sure. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. All right. Be it ordered the base and the plans and materials submitted the application of KLS comma LLC. Skip Murray in parentheses for an amendment to the previously approved Old Sea Point Road subdivision to add a lot on the south side of Old Sea Point Road be approved with the following conditions. Number one, plans be revised to reflect the town engineer's letter dated 10-14-03 and a reference to the minutes in regards to pulling up building permits and upgrading the road to the subdivision standard plan. We have second. 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 Moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, the next and last agenda item is the Arco Cisco school site plan. Mr. Carroll? tonight representing uh, Barbara Milnack and the uh, uh, Aka Cisco School and Learning Center. Uh, the plan that we have before you tonight is, is really what's what's happening is the Aka Cisco School has been in existence for uh, approximately 15 years or so and um, they've been located in South Portland and they've more or less outgrown their existing space and they found a 
a new location here in town, which is the old uh, Lutheran Redeemer Church on Spurwick Avenue. So we've been uh, working with Barbara and the, and the school for the past several months on on uh, how to renovate that school and make it an appropriate facility for for her uh, learning and teaching facilities. Uh, actually, here she is. Um, do you want to give a little introduction of sure. uh, the school itself, and then I'll take you through the plan and kind of answer any Thank questions you. you might have. Hi. I'm Barbara Milnick. Uh, I'm the director of the Al Francisco School and Learning Achievement Center. Uh, we operate uh, two businesses. Uh, one is a full-time private school for students with learning disabilities. The other is an after-school program, which is a tutorial program for really students of any age, uh, school age through adults, who need additional educational assistance for whatever reason, and that ranges from everything from uh, reading tutoring for young students through SAT prep for high school students to helping adults who have decided to go back to school and haven't had to do any math for many years, so quite wide-ranging. Uh, and at the moment, we operate both of those businesses out of a rented space on Route 1 in South Portland. Uh, we have outgrown that space, not so much from a space standpoint, but from a physical plant kind of standpoint in terms of uh, we don't have any space for playground for the kids, those kinds of things. The school piece has been, uh, we're in our 10th year this year, and uh, the after school program is actually uh, significantly older than that. And are, are looking for a spot where we can continue both of those businesses and, and have a, uh, a physical plant that's a little bit more befitting uh, the, the work that we do and, and the level of uh, people who come to us uh, out of the traffic a little bit, a um, little, little more wooded, a little, little more pastoral. Uh, been looking for space for over five years and uh, this is the one that seems to be the best fit. Uh, and all of that, all that time we've been looking. Well, sure. Um, I'm going to oh, slide over. <laughs> um, I'll take you through the site plan, but basically what we've, what we've really done is very minimal um, improvements or changes to the existing site on, uh, for the Redeemer Church. Um, this is Spurwink Avenue here. And the intersection of Spurwink and Route 77 is about 150 feet down here. There's, I believe, one, one residence in between um, this church property and the, the intersection. Um, the existing church building is here. We're not planning any additions or um, any, any exterior kind of improvements other than removing of some stained glass windows, uh, some doorways, and, and some other window and or replacement throughout the building. So the building as it, as it currently stands will pretty much stay the same. Dave Matero from Steve Blatt Architects is here. If you have any questions relating to the building, um, he'll be more than glad to, to answer those. I do have building floor plans and elevations here for your information also. Um, the existing site, there's a driveway that comes in through here now. There's currently existing parking here and a, and a large open parking area in the rear. Uh, for the most part, what we intend to do is just reconfigure the parking that's in there. You can see the darker areas here and here, and some over here are some slight areas where we're increasing the amount of uh, pavement areas, but we're also reducing or pulling out some, some existing paved areas in this part. So uh, the, the intent is really currently, if you've ever driven back in there and seen how the striping is or been in there on a Sunday when they've had church services, there's a very tight point here where the, the existing parking comes in. It's very tight to try to get through. We're really just trying to, to rework the circulation, make, make the, uh, the site work a little bit better. Uh, so we'll come in here. There'll be a series of parking the 10 spaces on this side and about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regular spaces and two handicapped spaces on the side adjacent to the school. And it circulates through here. We've got parking in the back, and we've got parking in the middle of this island. 
uh, this parking lot, and we're going to break it up with two landscaped islands. So currently, that's a big, wide open asphalt area. Uh, our intent is, is to define the parking areas and to break up that mass of parking with, with uh, some landscaping. Uh, the parking wall will be concentrated towards the rear of the, of the parking lot, and this area up through here is where we're going to accommodate up to three school buses that will be um, servicing the, the school here. So those, those school buses will be here in the morning, they'll leave, and then they'll come back in the afternoon to pick up the kids and leave. Uh, as Barbara has indicated, there's, there's currently, I believe, uh, 37 or 38 students at the school. Uh, this project is, is supposing a slight increase in that uh, growth, the slight, slow growth over the next few years. So we're really planning on 45 students here. So it's not, it's not a huge facility. Uh, the uh, the teacher-student ratio is really about one to four to six. Uh, it's, it's a very kind of hands-on, um, low-density learning environment. Uh, we, we are intending to provide a, a, an exterior dumpster. Uh, that dumpster will be fenced, and I know as part of uh, the staff comments that uh, uh, you're looking for, for a detail on that. But that we will submit that prior to the next meeting. Um, there will be a soft play area here. Currently there is some play equipment on the site. We're going to take that and move it into a place and, and provide a safe uh, landing area underneath that equipment for the children. So that, that area is defined right here. The rest of the lot uh, where it's open now will remain a grass play area. And the areas that are treed, and there are some fairly significant um, buffers and, and natural woodlands, both on the um, south side and on the north side of the property, uh, those will all be maintained as natural buffers. We're not intending to go in and cut those or thin them or, or do anything to kind of um, uh, minimize the amount of buffering that would be available there. Uh, the number of parking spaces, I know we, we had a fair amount of discussion about that at our um, workshop meeting. We, we are accommodating 43 parking spaces here, and that, that really relates to the ordinance where there's, we're providing one space for each staff, and there are 20 staff, and, um, and one space for every two students. So if you take 45 students and take half of that, it's 23 and 20 staff. So that's where we get the 43 um, parking spaces. I think I've indicated in the application that there is the potential along here when, for event parking when there, when there are no buses that we can fit another eight spaces in here. So we think we can get up to 51 or so uh, parking spaces on the site. Uh, and uh, currently Barbara told me today that they have 28 spaces where they are now and uh, they've never had a problem with parking. So uh, she feels very confident that the 43 spaces is is more than adequate for what we need. Um, we are served by uh, public water and sewer. Um, I think we indicated in the application that there would be a one inch, there's a one inch line now serving the building. Uh, at that point in time, we weren't sure what our fire uh, sprinkler requirements were going to be. And in the meantime, we have had discussions with the state fire marshal. We are proposing to put a uh, HydroPro system in here, which is a kind of a limited sprinkler system, and that will require uh, a new two-inch service, water service, from the street into into the building. And uh, that is not included in your in your application. That's something that's just come up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the other thing that's come up in, in discussions with the contractor is that we're going to have to upgrade the electric service, so we're going to bring a new uh, power, new underground power from this power pole right here into the into the building also, which we had not anticipated at the time we did the, uh, the application. Um, so that's pretty much it. The, uh, the storm water, the storm drainage is, is pretty much as it currently exists. We're really, we're adding, I, think, I believe it's around 600, 620 uh, square feet of impervious area. So we think that it's a fairly minimal impact on um, storm water. There are a couple of detention basins that were put in here and here as part of the last site plan review. I think this back parking lot was expanded back in 89 or something like that. 
um, and those seem to function fine. There is a letter in the application from our civil engineer, and I believe uh, the town's civil engineer has looked at it and, and confirmed that uh, uh, no stormwater is required. Um, there are a couple of waivers that we've asked for. Um, one is one is the um, requirement for documenting all site conditions within 200 feet of the property. We have on, I believe it's on uh, sheet L1, um, which is the existing conditions. I believe it's L1. Or, or, I'm sorry, it's EC, which is in your packet. Uh, there is a there is a map there of abutters. It's a small map, but it does indicate buildings and driveways within 200 feet, but we haven't located, you know, specific, we haven't had a surveyor go out and actually locate these, but we think that um, this is fairly accurate, and um, because we're, we're providing such minimal um, impact and improvement on the site, we think that uh, it's appropriate not to have that, that level of survey. Um, I should also mention that we are we are widening this driveway. That's really the only site improvement that's that's going to be visible from Spurwink Avenue. We are widening the, this from uh, I think it's 19 or 20 feet to 24 feet, and that's really to accommodate, make sure we've got good two-way circulation through there, especially with buses entering and exiting out onto Spurwink Avenue. We want to make sure that uh, that's safe, and as they make those turning movements, they're not they're not uh, encroaching into the other travel lane. Uh, as far as landscaping goes, we, there, we're going to try to maintain as much existing landscaping on the site as possible. Uh, there's a plan in your packet that indicates we are adding some supplemental shrub plantings around the building itself, and again, some tree plantings in the, in the island. But it's, it's fairly minimal. It's a very heavily treed site. It feels very forested. and. Uh, and closed, and uh, we didn't really feel a need to provide a high level of landscaping on this project. Um, I would like to go through, there were some, some comments by the uh, uh, town engineer, and I believe are, are more or less summarized in Maureen's memo to you. Um, there, was, there was a comment about no lot line description being submitted. And in fact, on, on the EC plan, there is on that locust plan, uh, we do have lot dimensions indicated on there. So uh, what we're really dealing with here is we have not, the, the owner has not hired a surveyor to complete a new boundary survey for this project. Our feeling was that the existing boundary survey uh, that, was, that we pulled out of a file from a previous plan uh, seemed to be seemed to be adequate back in '89 when it, when it was submitted. Uh, we're not doing any work that's really close or encroaching to any setbacks or or um, neighbors, and so our feeling was rather than spend money on on a boundary survey at this point in time, we'd uh, spend the money on the building instead. Um, Again, the, uh, we, we are asking for a waiver on uh, detailed site information within 100 and 200 feet of the project. And uh, we have gone around and, and like I said, indicated uh, buildings and driveways within that area. There is a, an existing catch basin, I believe, that's out here along Spurwink Avenue. And uh, that was not indicated on the original survey that we've been using. And uh, we're more than glad to, to locate that and, and get that on the next uh, on the next go around of submissions. And uh, we do indicate that, uh, or it is indicated that we need a detail for uh, a dumpster enclosure and also for landscape plantings. And uh, those are typical details. They just uh, did not make it onto this plan. Um, the only other comment, and I think it came from Maureen, it's, it's really one of uh, the traffic study. The traffic study that was uh, in your packet was a study completed by Bill Bray. Uh, it does go through kind of um, the existing and proposed traffic impacts and the impact on the intersection at Spurgeon and uh, 77. And uh, 
the conclusion of that is that basically the service at that intersection will remain a level B service, which is actually very good. Maureen did bring up a comment that his study was based on 37 or 38 students, and we're proposing up to 45. I did speak with him today about that, and he felt, he said, I could use the words, very confident that the level of service would not be impeded by that additional seven or eight students. He will be updating his traffic study to include those 45, up to 45 students, and we'll be resubmitting that along. But he felt confident that there really wasn't going to be an impact, a detriment due to that increase. And basically he was working with numbers that were given to him several months ago when this project started, and that's why there was a discrepancy. So other than that, I guess we'd like to answer any questions, or I'm assuming that we're going to have to move this through a public hearing and then go from there. But the applicant is very interested in kind of completing this in a very timely manner. I think their lease is up at where their existing school is at the end of November, so it's kind of a month-to-month thing with them, and the sooner we can get this moving forward and they can get some work done in there, they can be in their school. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. The first issue for the board, we have to make a determination on completeness on the application. So if there's any discussion on that, Dave. I guess I'd just like to make a comment that I don't see any reason to not approve the waiver request for item number eight as far as the physical features on the site plan. So I have no problem with that. Okay. Any other comments on completeness? There are obviously a number of things that will be added to the plan. I guess the board then has to decide if you want to deem it complete with the understanding those things will be added or deem it incomplete and wait until the next meeting to deem it complete and approve it. I, for one, think that there has to be a public hearing on this given the change of use and traffic issues, so nothing would be delayed in that regard. Similarly, with the traffic study, if that can be updated in writing, then we would have that information. So does anybody have any other comments on the completeness issue? Okay. Do we have a motion? Dave? A motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and facts presented, the application of the Acoustico School be to convert the building located at 126 Sparrowing from a church to a school be deemed complete. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. That's unanimous. It's deemed complete. Does anyone have any other questions of the applicant on the substantive application? I have one regarding the sprinkler system. And you said that the fire inspector or the state inspector inspected the building, and that was has the fire chief made any comments or has he been a question capable of the fire chief? Dave talked about that because he met with the state fireman. Yeah. I had a meeting with the state fireman. Excuse me. You just need to identify yourself. David Matero with Stephen Blatter. Thank you. I did have a meeting with the state fire marshal, Steve Dodge. Since then, the contractor who was with that meeting with me met with a year-round fire chief here. The HydroPro system can be installed into a domestic system. So that's why we're able to do that into a two-inch line. It is a lot less expensive than a full sprinkler system. And because we're changing the use into a school, the fire marshal was very persuasive that we should install one. Although, technically, 
um, we can get around that by uh, creating egress windows and uh, rated corridor walls. Uh, in the end, we would have spent more money uh, doing it that way. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? <clears throat> Dave? Be it further ordered, or I should say I have a motion for the board to consider, be it further ordered that the application be tabled to November 18, 2003 meeting of the board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. So moved. We have a second. Barbara? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll second that one. Okay. All in favor? We're adjourned.